Hi students, um, this is the makeup class for the Hangul Day vacation. So I hope that you get to hear this and enjoy this class. Just a reminder to you to make sure you have your book with you for this video. Um, because we'll be looking at the book during this um, video lesson. Um, try not to be distracted by your smartphones too much, especially Kakao Talk. If you can, turn off your notifications. Have a notebook ready with a pen in case I ask you ask you to do something. Um, try not to fall asleep during the video keep your focus on what I'm saying sit at a desk and concentrate on the video so also if you want to look at the syllabus again to get dates and things like that um, this is the the link. Um, you can see the shortened link there. So short URL dot at forward slash lowercase z uppercase d uppercase f uppercase h h and number five, and that will give you um, the syllabus if you need to look at it again. Some of you expressed interest in studying in England, um, and I want to recommend that. These photos are taken from a Bour uh, Bournemouth in the south coast of England. Uh, there's lots of language schools here. In the summer, it's really popular. It's a popular place to go to, and and it's also not too busy there. It's it's a little quiet so if you wanted to focus on your study you you can do that but you can also have a good time there too so there's lots of things to do there shopping and um, nightlife there's the beach and there's lots of restaurants and places to go so think about that if you'd like to visit England and study there For those who've not yet signed on to IQ Online, um, there are there will be some listening homework using the IQ Online practice. Uh, this is the link, the website, and according to your class, you will have a code. I've listed the codes here, so whatever your class is, make sure you log on to IQ online with the correct code. If you need any help with that please let me know during the next class. <clears throat> so here's the schedule for my class on Mondays and Wednesdays RGC 1033-15. Please make sure you check the dates here. Don't forget that the next date to really consider is the project dates project A um, and then just after that we have midterm reviews so make sure you are aware of those dates and you come to those classes that's also relevant for RGC 1033-33 Keep in mind the dates for the projects which are coming soon and the midterms and midterm reviews. Make sure you come to those. My Wednesday and Friday class, RGC 1033-36. Your schedule is here, so please make sure you keep in mind that projects and midterms are coming up.
my other class, RGC 1033-39. Again, it's on Wednesday and Friday. You also need to think about Project A and midterms. The dates are coming soon, so be ready for those. Lastly, my other Monday and Wednesday class. Again, just make sure you remember to come along to the classes for Project A's, uh, Project A midterm reviews and midterm. For those who have problems getting into Kakao Talk Open Chat, um, I hope I can help you with that. Um, make sure in the, in the next class you ask me for that. Don't forget also to keep doing the homework on Google Classroom. If you get an email about that, please make sure you do that as soon as you can. There will be two types of homework this semester. There will be listening homework from the book and there will be Google Classroom questions with the presentations. So right now I want to just look at the things that are in the test for the midterm and the finals. If you look at the midterm list there, let's start with the midterm and start with unit 1. The first one is page 16. If you go to page 16, you'll see that the grammar which will be in the test is the present continuous. So make sure you prepare for that. Don't forget there's a difference between affirmative and negative and also things that are happening now and things that are happening around now. So you see, you'll see those on page 16 and 17. If you go back to page 6 in unit 1, you will see uh, the vocabulary that will be in the test on page 6. You should have done the listening for that and there you can see the underlined words that will be in the test so you make sure you know those words and their meanings which you can see on page 6 um, if we go to unit 2 page 28 first you can see some more vocabulary this will also be in the midterm and again just make sure you know the meaning of those words so for example in question 1 there hide means to go to a place where no one can see them okay so that's the meaning of that word so make sure you study those then go to page 40 on page 40 you can see schwa the pronunciation schwa make sure you learn about that for the written test so if we look at part C on page 40 the word contain and the word concrete have different pronunciations of C-O-N contain uses schwa, concrete does not and then on the next page, page 41 you can look at the phrases and sentences we learned about examples and that will be in the test also if we go to unit 3 page 49 more vocabulary to be learned for the test and you can see them in the box there behavior, courtesy, etiquette, manners, polite and rude and also modal verbs on page 61 if you turn to page 61 the grammar there should and shouldn't so we will need to you'll need to revise that for the test as well um, you'll have to revise affirmative sentences, negatives and questions and then in unit 4 go to page 72 you can see some more vocabulary to learn and the, the underlined words in those sentences on 72 and 73 um, and then if you go to page 83 you learn about the imperative verbs um, that's a verb that's a sentence without a subject at the beginning like a command 
and then again on page 84 if you turn the page more pronunciation and this is about stress so we learned about schwa and um, the, the unit for pronunciation on stress will also be in the test so work on those parts of the test in your sort of during your homework time and prepare for that those that midterm test the final test also has some things to study mostly vocab vocabulary and grammar but we won't focus on that in this class so another thing that we need to consider just before the midterm is the projects there's the link if you if you go on to any of the PPTs that I've sent you you can click on that link and that will go into the projects choices um, so so if you do go in there that there's a few ideas for projects there's actually five ideas the first idea is to pick an important or influential person that is related to your major and you need to discuss that relationship to your major you need to talk about the background and the legacy and the achievements of that person second option is to do company creation so the product the customers the sh and the selling point of the product um, another one is about um, how to be a successful student at Dongut University including social life and the next one is teaching a concept from your major and the last one would be a job which is connected to your major in some way so when you prepare for your projects which will be soon you need to make sure that you understand the options in the options you have for the projects another thing to think about is who's going to be in your team are you happy with the team that you're in right now uh, if not what are you going to do about it um, think about the plans that you need to make the roles that each member of the team will have and there will be a Q&A time during the final presentation which I will do with you so you need to prepare for that so make sure you are all arranged you got all the deadlines and all the times correct for that and let me know if you need any help or have any questions with regards to projects okay so um, when you get time I want you to watch some video clips um, before you start this lecture and they are about their video clips from the movie Zathura Zathura is a movie with Kirsten Stewart in and a few other famous actors and the movie is about um, a board game that comes to life. If you watch the two video clips here, the two links, you'll find that there's some quite amusing, quite funny uh, video clips about um, board games, about the movie, and I recommend that you watch them. So we're on unit four, so the unit is about board games at the moment, and I just want to introduce you to that. Uh, this chapter by showing you these movie clips so if you have time go to these movies and watch them what you could do I guess is pause this video now and look at the use the links there I'll put some links in the sections below which you can use to connect to them and then um, watch those before you do the rest of the class So this is one of the board games I like to play, play with my friends. Uh, this is called Terraforming Mars. The goal of the game is to basically make Mars a place where people can live. So you're meant to put um, crops and grass there and meant to make water there and temp the temperature needs to be livable at a livable temperature with lots of uh, with lots of oxygen for breathing there's lots of cards that you can use to gain these things 
and you have all sorts of money and different pieces and cards it's a really complex game but it's really fun and um, it's a little bit expensive but you can enjoy it I think and it's a game that can last more than an hour can sometimes be three to four hours if you're really going slowly I can do it I think I can play the game in around about two hours now with one friend um, and it's just really complex but fun so that's called terraforming Mars and I recommend that if you like board game cafes this is one of the board games you might be able to find there so I'm going to talk about the game Rush Hour it's a kind of board game with movable pieces the idea of the game is you have a red car which is blocked um, from getting out there's, on the board there's a gate and uh, the gate is a doorway for the car to get out of the traffic jam and so the idea is you're meant to move the trucks and the other cars forward and back or left and right up and down depend uh, to help the red car find its way out of the traffic jam um, the game is a little bit challenging that the one the game that I have has 40 levels a number of other there is another one with harder more cards and harder levels in it and there's also different styles of the game now which are more complicated or easier for younger people so I'm going to show you a five minute video of me playing the game and see if you can compete with me if you can find this game somewhere in a board game cafe and beat my time at level 19 okay so we're on intermediate level 19 we're almost finished and let's remove remove everything so remove all of these wonderfully fluorescent colors I don't think I've ever seen such a colorful game before perhaps the board is a bit gray they need to perhaps design a more colorful one or I could paint it myself I suppose um, so here we've got the red car in first let's do that first today on this one there we go and there the pink is next to it why is the pink there you have to ask these questions when you play this game you say why is this blue here what is the point of the blue being there? They also ask, why is there this blank here? You ask these questions because that's what questions are for, to find, to get answers. You know, there's no green truck this time, but there is a purple one and there is a blue one. And so we have three spaces. We've got this big space here, which could have the purple car there, you see? and the pink could go there and the red can go there right you've also got a space here that's nothing from uh, up or down but the blue truck and the gray car could go into that area and this four these four space uh this square here will obviously suit the yellow well and the green car up here um so really the the problem will is getting the blue out the way here and I think we get again I think we have to put this in the middle here first once we've done that then we can do the second stage I've got that's my feeling okay so um, obviously the green is in the way uh, I think the green needs to go here this is my feeling I feel the green needs to go down here and to do that, we've got to move all of this. I do feel we start with the purple here and the gray like that. And this goes here and that goes like that. For now, right? There we go, the pink can go through. Mm, let's put the pink here so the blue can come back. This can go there, this can go here, this can go here and this can go here. Okay, and then the green can go there, put the red there, 
green can go there. Right, that's the first thing. I think this is a really significant part of the move. Now we've got to move these two. This can only go here. Can't go there. The purple one though can go there. But we've got to move these guys. And the only way to move these, I think, is going back with green, I think, like this. Move that there, see? We've got to get the grey one, so we go back again. There's literally a lot of jiggery-pokery here. A lot of moving around, see? So now those two are out of the way. And... Um, got to move the purple up here you see and the red can go there so the orange is in the way well you can see now again we're doing that two step to freedom type thing it's more than two steps but we trap him we trap the red car in help I'm trapped the guy inside is panicking but don't worry the drunken truck driver in the yellow truck will reverse without killing anybody And then the orange car moves here. It's a little old lady in there. And the red car goes out. We really should give characters for all the people driving the trucks and cars. So there's level 19. So what I want you to do now uh, is to mind map different online games. Personally, I do not know anything about online games, but I know that it's really popular in South Korea. So perhaps this is something you can do with some of your teammates. If you already have a Kakao Talk chat with your teammates for your projects, perhaps you can do that together. Just list some of the online games that are available online. If you haven't got one yet, I recommend that you just do it on paper, um, perhaps share it with the open chat. <coughs> so honestly, as I said, I, I'm not really into online gaming, but I do have a number of games on my smartphone. The two games that I have on my smartphone are uh, one game called Risk, which is actually a board game but they have an application for it and that is a dice rolling game of conquest so your goal is to conquer the world by rolling better dice than the other teams and usually with the board game there are three to four players but with the online game you play against either the internet or you play against other players over the internet and Quite, quite enjoy that. My other phone game is one called Hungry Shark. These days I'm not using it very much, but the goal of that um, game is to eat people and smash things and gain money and objects to win the game. It's an interesting game, but I haven't played it in a while, as I said. So the games that I know, I've, the games that I've heard of are Battleground, uh, LOL, WOW, um, and Maple Story, but I think that's a really old one that no one plays anymore. So that's just a few examples. If you've got any other examples, why don't you put them on a piece of paper and take a picture of your mind map and send it to the open chat. Some of the other games that perhaps you know uh, Fortnite, which is a really popular one these days, and yeah, I mean there's so many ways to do gaming as well, people tend to use their phones a lot, but PC rooms are really popular now in Korea, and have been for a long time, and although younger people don't use them, they're still open 24 hours a day, and I know that lots of university students enjoy playing the, these games and now also you can play online games using um, the PlayStation 
and other games consoles and I remember growing up we didn't we had my brother had those uh, games consoles but he never we never really had the internet so he just played them against me or my one of my brother my other brother or against a friend and not over the internet but now that you have the internet you can play things like um, the PlayStation and Nintendo and Xbox over the internet and there's Nintendo Switch which is now the most popular games console these days and to be honest I have a PlayStation 3 in my office but I don't really use it um, yeah so just do that mind map and obviously with if we're talking about online games consoles such as the uh, switch there's loads of different games that you can play on there now including Mar the Mario Kart game and there's all sorts of other ones that are quite interesting I'm just looking at a website at all the old games consoles dating back many years ago and in 1977 there was one called Atari and I remember having that as a child and then Sega came out with um, their games consoles and there, were, there was the Mega Drive which was a really famous one um, back in the 1980s um, and then Nintendo brought out the GameCube and then there was the Game Boy and all the Playstations and the Sony uh, Sony brought out lots of other things like that, Nintendo 3DS, Xboxes came out so many different games consoles um, and these days as I said the Switch is probably the best one on the market and excellent for online gaming so as I said, just do a mind map about online games. Thank you. So there's another thing that we need to talk about. Um, if you haven't already started designing a board game in the class, uh, after you listen to this, perhaps you could start to plan a board game. Um, if you can, again, talk to your team members. Think of what are in board games obviously dice cards boards pieces um, strategies are needed and what's the goal of the game the rule book so um, there's lots of types of games out there as I talked to you before as I mentioned to you before there's rush hour really it's a, it's a solo game and you're competing I guess against the board and against the clock there's lots of solo games but if you play board games against other people you've got all sorts of types of games and the one the big one in Korea is Blue Marble um, Blue Marble is actually very very similar to Monopoly which is the Western American board game about making money and that one usually you have to play against other people um, other board games include the game Clue which is about solving a crime solving a murder um, there's the board game um, Catan Settlers of Catan which is where you need to go in and you need on the in the game you need to build roads and cities and you need to try to get um, 11 points I believe it is and once you've gained 11 points then you've won the game and the other games right now that you might know about are um, Ludo I'm not quite sure if you know that game but basically it's almost the same as Yunori it's going around the board if you land on somebody else they go back to the beginning it's almost the same as Yunnoi the Korean board game that people play during the holidays there's other games that like there's a game called Battleship where you have to guess where people have put their ships on a board and if you can guess correctly 
and sink their battleships, you win the game. There's more traditional games like chess. There's two types of chess. There's the Western style, and then there's the Eastern style chess, which is in Korea called Jangi, and it's similar to a Chinese game, almost the same but a little different. Um, chess is in the movie uh, Harry Potter, if you remember that. Um, Harry Potter and his friends have to compete against the board and um, Ron Weasley sacrifices himself in the game if you remember. There are other games too um, such as Bang which is a card game and it's based around the theme of cowboys in the wild west in America and that's a really fun game and worth playing um, if you go to the board game cafes in Korea you will just see all of these games and you'll, you, can, you get a chance to play all of them um, and so I recommend that you perhaps meet with your friends go and go to a board game cafe near your home and just play cards or board games with them um, and the one that I've seen a lot in Korea is Da Vinci. I don't play that game, but it looks like something, it looks like a game that Koreans really enjoy playing. Um, there are lots of word games as well out there. Scrabble is one of them. So if you're really into studying English and you want to learn new words, then there's games like Scrabble. There's similar games to Scrabble, one called Boggle, another game called Upwards, and it's really all about putting um, spelling words correctly and gaining points by spelling words correctly and whenever people play Scrabble in England they do tend to have a dictionary with them to make sure that they spell the words correctly so there's no cheating Okay, so this is what I want to do. I want you to do with your groups as well, if you can. And this is just a very simple quiz that you can make. And then I want you to perhaps post this on our forum. And um, just choose eight words from the chapter. Um, and jumble up the letters so that... Uh, it's preferable to do the vocabulary that's in the vocabulary sections in the chapter, in chapter 4. And you take the word and you just jumble it up, jumble up the letters, and then the other team has to sort of answer the question, answer, uh, unjumble them. And so I think eight words is more than enough, I think to do and you can pick up you can get those words from page 72 and 73 the underlined words there that you could use and there's also a box of words on page 77 that you can use so choose eight of those words jumble those up and then get ready to post them as a quiz on a forum for the class so that students can work on those quizzes as well. I'll give you an example. For example, if I if I take one of the words calculate, I might change the spelling slightly to A A C C E L L T U A A C C E L L T U and then another team would have to guess what that word was. Okay, so if you've done all of that, 
we can perhaps do some activities in the book. Turn to page 72 and you can do the listening. Uh, so this listening is on IQ Online Practice Unit 4 section. You can find that through the Media Center using IQ Online Practice. Um, there's uh, on page 72 there's a vocabulary section and perhaps you could do those questions 1 to 8 um, for example question 1 what does the word developer mean is it a game creator or a game seller well, it's, what do you think and then uh, you can do the listening there which is page 73 it asks you to take notes and then there's some true false activity on page 74 uh, some multiple choice questions on 74 as well and and then it asks you to do to solve the um, crossword on page 75 using the clues and that's a really good activity to do on page 76 you get listening skills listening for names and dates and you can read the box there, the brown box, it says Names and dates are often important details when you're listening whether a friend is telling you a story or you're listening to a news report or a lecture Pay attention to names and dates as you listen and try to remember why they are important If possible, write down names and dates with brief notes to remind you why they are important Okay, so, and that particular uh, listening activity is about Scrabble so do that if you can and then on page 77 is the second listening um, if you fill in the blanks uh, for that um, article community yard sales using the vocabulary there and then do the listening and more multiple choice questions and true false questions there and then if you go to page 80 there are further questions to ask each other and more discussion on page 81 and then on page 82 vocabulary skills about word families and suffixes so work through those two if you have time a suffix is a word or syllable placed after a root word a suffix often changes the part of speech of the word for example the suffixes ty and city sometimes mark the change from adjective to a noun and then it gives you some examples there honest, honesty, popular, popularity, simple, simplicity so here's some further questions about crosswords have you ever played a crossword? yes I have, what about you? Do you think English crosswords are easy or difficult? I think they're I think they're very difficult at times. What do you think of word games like Hangman, Word Search, or Scrabble? I think they're fun, but not always easy. I think Hangman is very fun. I think Word Searches are quite easy, and Scrabble can be easy and difficult depending on what words you have to make with the letters. And then the last question, are you good at English vocabulary? Not always, I'm not actually. How about you? So ask, answer these questions, write down your answers. You can share those with me in class um, or send a photo to our group and with your answers. So look through those. Another thing you can do is to make a simple crossword which we can share in the class with each other um, and you can share that, um, you can make that by yourself. I would recommend using the words and the definitions in the chapter um, and again use those words which are for the listening activities um, and that would really help other students as well. So page uh, 72 and page 77 have vocabulary lists and I would recommend making some crosswords based on those
Here's something a little bit extra that you can do with some of your teammates. I've given you two options here of two different role plays that you can do. The first one is about going to an internet cafe and playing games and your friend is angry because she or he thought that you made them lose the game. How do you resolve that problem? The second role play option is you and your friends are designing an online game. How do you go about discussing that? So work together with some of the, your team members in the class and make a role play that perhaps we can look at next time we meet in class. Here's some, here's some questions you can answer about competitions. What is your favorite competition? Is there any particular competition that you really enjoy? Some people like to talk about t uh, talent contests on TV. Do you like any of the talent shows on TV? Um, some of the famous ones are Show Me The Money, Unpretty Rap Star, um, Produce 101. I Particularly, I personally don't watch them, but I know a lot of people who do. Um, the second question there is about competing with other students. Do you ever compete with students in your English class? Uh, I know some people can be very competitive in in education. Um, not sure whether it's positive; it's a positive or negative thing. But um, some people really go for it and are really competitive. And but I think it can also be a little bit difficult for people sometimes who don't like that kind of competitive style of education. Um, so, but it is suited to some people, but not for others. So, do you compete with yourself? Do you sort of do something and then try to do better next time? Are there, th are there things that you do, for example, are there uh, sort of, say you're, you're learning English words, do you try to learn more English words a week later, more than you did the week before? The next question is a little bit strange. How did competition begin? Perhaps it started with the Greeks in the Olympics and it's now become other ways of competing maybe it even began before that when it comes to hunting who can hunt the biggest animal when it comes to farming who can make the most crops I think competition's always been there the next question is quite interesting which country is in competition with your country well you can decide on that. I think every country has a neighboring country that they compete with and it's usually something connected to a history that goes centuries back. So lots of European countries compete against one another in sports but we've always been in competition with them. Um, so what about Korea? Does Korea have any countries it competes with? The next question says, what would the world be like if there was no competitiveness? Would life be better or worse? Some people say it would be worse because there will be no motivation to do anything good. Others say it would be better because then people would be kinder to one another. So what about you? What do you think? Do you think competitiveness is unnecessary or do you think it's a crucial and important part of life? Here's a question about gender issues. Are men more competitive than women? Some people might say yes they are. I have my doubts. I don't think it's true. I think women can be as competitive as men. Uh, I think competitiveness can cross genders. I think men can compete with women and vice versa. Women compete with men. And I think that is becoming a more, more of a normal part of life. So the next question is about how to learn to be more competitive. Some people say that children should learn to be competitive. What do you think? 
Is it something that can be taught? Should we be taught to compete fairly and honestly? What about driving in South Korea? Is there a racing mentality when people get behind the wheel? Do they compete on the road? And the last question is about whether you are uh, a bad sportsman person, a bad sports person. If you lose at a game, do you feel sour and upset about it? Or are you happy for the other person? I think most people would be honest and say they feel a little bit upset if they lose. I think that's a very normal place to be in life. Okay, here's a little bit of an exercise you can do. Um, perhaps you could imagine what kinds of questions you would get in the test. So if you remember the previous slide talk, gave you a list of test questions or uh, hints about what might be in the test, why don't you prepare what you think might be questions in the test. I've asked you to prepare four questions. Maybe you can do that with a team member from your project teams or another class, um, st another student in the class and just be ready to perhaps test each other or make some questions, bring them into class to test other students so that they can practice getting ready for the midterm test and so there's lots of tests in unit, there's lots of things in unit 4 that are in the test but I guess you can make some questions from all the four units which are in the midterm units 1 to 4 Finally, um, after this class, online class, I want you to think about how this class went for you and review this. Uh, choose one of these sentence beginnings and then complete the sentence and be ready to share that in the class. So for example, number one says, the most interesting, interesting thing I learned today was, and then you end that sentence. Um, I would say the most interesting thing I learned today was about the board game Terraforming Mars. So choose one of those um, phrases or sentences and then complete that and get ready to share that in the class. Thank you guys, thank you for listening to this class. Um, go through the activities and work through them as best you can. And I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. And I hope that um, you can do well in the finals and the midterm tests. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.